So we've had our A stable multi vibrator for a while. Right now we added a potentiometer to it so we can change the frequency on the fly. We can slow it way down. You'll see the blinking over here slow down. Really what I want to be able to do is plan for a specific frequency. So I looked up a formula and it seems to be frequency, which is going to be in Hertz, is equal to, I don't know what you call this, inverse of something called LN2 times, and in this case we have R1 times C1 plus R2 two times C two. So apparently this means uh, the natural logarithm of two, which it simplifies to 0 0.693 apparently. So that's good enough for me. So besides this weird logarithm thing, it's pretty simple. We just multiply these two together and multiply these two, then we add it up, multiply by this number, and then it's divided by one and that's our Hertz. This is to figure out what Hertz it's running at. So for example, if we had our 10K here or whatever, I think this is a 10K, yeah. And we have a 22 microfarad capacitor, we should be able to work out the frequency. But what I wanna do is, is actually backwards. I want to solve for, in this case, 60 Hertz. What I'm thinking is if we have an unknown here and we have an unknown, 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 we need to provide some more information. So we're going to give it the F, but we also need to, I guess, assume a value for the resistors. We know that we're going to use the same value resistors for both, which makes it very simple. So what I'm going to do is just figure out what kind of capacitance we need by assuming a certain resistor value. So I'm going to put in 60 because that's what I want my Hertz to be. And then one over 0 0.693 and then I'm going to do it's going to multiply and then I'm going to put in 10,000 here so 10,000 ohms times c I'm just going to put c because it should be the same value and then times 10 times c so I, I think this should work. Let me run it through a calculator and see what the value is. Okay, so the result that I'm getting in the calculator is if we want to use 10,000 ohm resistors and we want to reach 60 hertz our capacitors need to be 1.205 microfarads. So what I'm gonna do is we assumed this value, right, a 10K, and we got this microfarad from it to get this Hertz. And so all we need to do, if we had an exact uh, 1.205, which we don't, of course, but if we had this, then all we would do is put that, those in here, put 10Ks here and where the potentiometer is right now, and it should work at 60 hertz if I'm following the equation properly. What I'm gonna do is look at the capacitors that I have, and then we're gonna run the equation again and solve for the resistors this time. So we use the ballpark idea, right? A 10K to get the capacitor. So we're gonna find the closest match that we have and then do the equation again, and then get the resistance value that's needed. Because at least with the resistors, we can easily add a bunch together in series. Whereas with the capacitors, I don't really know how to do that. So let me look at what I got. This is just a kit that I got when I first started. Right here, we have some really low ones. I think that's picofarads. That's super low. We have, I don't know if you could see that with the light. I apologize for the annoying light. We have 4.7 nanofarads, 100 nanofarads. Right here we have one microfarad. That's super close. So that's going to be what we want. We have, it, we need it to be 1.205 microfarads and we have a one microfarad. So what I'm gonna do now is, just like I said, we're going to run it again. So we know that we still want 60 Hertz. And now we know what kind of farads we actually have, right? So one over 0 0.693 times R times, this is in capacitance, right? So it's it's really, it's a micro, man. How many zeros is that? Zero point, so this is milli, is, it, is that it? I surely be using scientific notation to make this easier. Plus, and then we do it again, right? The same thing. So I guess I should just put like one over a million. So <laughs> you can see my math is not very good, to be honest with you. Uh, it's not my strong suit. So if I solve this, or if my calculator solves it, let me not take any credit for that, then we should get our resistance value. So we'll know that our capacitance is one microfarad, which we have, our capacitors, and then we just get our resistance. So let's see what that value is. All right, so it seems like our resistance in this case, roughly 12K, so 12,000 ohms. And this makes sense, right? Because we lowered our capacitance, so our, our resistor needs to be raised up a bit. So we have our two values here. We have our one microfarad capacitor, and we have our resistance. So I think we should give this a shot and see if we can hit 60 hertz. So I have our little dude over here. I'm gonna plug out power. I'm gonna take out the potentiometer. Let's see, so we're gonna have two resistors, that go in series. So on this side, we have a 10K, but we need to add 2000 ohms to it. And I got all of these. I mean, there's like a ton in here. So let's see what we got. A 3K, 470, 2K. 
I think it's technically 2200. This should work. So we need two of these. And he's just going to go in series with the other one. And then I'll worry about the capacitor after. Okay, so I don't know if you could see that. But we have uh, the power coming into the 10K and it goes into the 2K. And in series, it's really easy. We just add them up. So we have 10,000, we have 2,000. So we should be about 1,200 right here. 12,000, I'm sorry. So for the other side, I'm going to do the same thing. So we have our uh, 10K and I'm going to shift it over just slightly. And then I'm going to put in this other 2K. And it's going to go into where the capacitor is. 10K coming in here and then 2K and together they make 12,000. So now I'm going to get the capacitor I was talking about before, if I can find him. So let's look for him together. So here's a bunch. So 33, 10, 4.7. Here's the one. So this is the one microfarads. They're pretty big. I thought they'd be a lot smaller. So we can get rid of our 220s or whatever these are. 22s. All right, so here's one of these dude. Can we see it on the camera? Let me get this out of the way. Yeah, one microfarad right there. 50 volts max. I'm on 3 volts, so I'm super under that. Now we could just put it in. And this goes to this orange cable, I think. So it was before. So he's basically just being charged by those two resistors at 12,000 ohms and then going into the orange cable uh, to go to the other side. The other one does the same thing. And this, this should be it, I think. What I'm thinking is, well, I guess we could turn it on and see what it looks like. And we have two solder lights, which I think makes sense. I, th I think it's, well, it's so funny because my eyes are not showing what the camera is showing. The camera is showing them blinking quite slowly, I would say. But in real life, they look pure solid, both of them. I can't see any oscillation at all. And I think that's a good sign. I think it's just showing that they're blinking so fast, uh, 60 times a second, it should be. So let's get our um, oscilloscope. Hello. I don't know the best way to measure this. I guess a, ca a capacitor might be the best way. Maybe I should add just a little post I can just grab onto for the negative lead. And then I'll just put in a cable and grab on there just to make it easy. So right now it's showing supposedly 87 hertz by my conversion, 0 0.087 kilohertz. So it should be about 87 hertz, which isn't too, too far off from 60, but definitely not, not really the mark. I'm going to move my output. I like that it goes back to 87 hertz when I remove it and, and put it back on both sides. It's showing that. So it seems to be pretty even, but it's not the 60 hertz that I was looking for. The value that we really should have had was 12,049 was the ideal number. And we seem to have 12,200. So I guess that is why it could be higher, but it seems significantly higher. 87 from 60 is or almost 50% higher. I'm gonna measure the resistance. See if that tells us anything interesting. So we have the, I'm definitely making sure my power is out. I think it's kind of dangerous to do with power in. So I'm gonna check the resistance and see if we get 12K acro uh, across the resistors here. So I guess I'll plug out this guy, plug out this guy. And we have our resistance here. Uh, so we know that we have a 10K and a 12 and a, and a 2K. So together it should be 12K. So I'm going to put this into the 10K and put this side on the on the 12. And sure enough, we have almost exactly 12,000 ohms of resistance between these two. So that 87 hertz number seems way high to me. Like off by 50% is a lot. On the other side, we have another 12. Sorry for the cable. But it's also 12. Definitely 12K. So we have two 12Ks. I guess what I'll do right now is remove the 2K and just run with the 10K. So I'm going to plug this in again and see what we get. So I'm just skipping the, the 2K. Now we're back on a 10K circuit. And let's see if we get closer to 60 Hertz and hook on. So ground goes on and our diagnostic side goes on. Oh, wait, I'm, I'm wrong. I lowered. <laughs> But it's great to see. It's a wonderful lesson. Uh, I, I lower the resistance, which actually speeds up the frequency. If I want to slow down the frequency, I need to add resistance. So it's great to see, though, that the big difference here. We had, we had 87 hertz before, and now we have 107 hertz. So it's going even faster. So I guess what we need to do is add resistance. I do have some 1Ks lying around here. So maybe what I'll do is add back the 2Ks and then add a 1K. And hopefully that will do it. So let's plug out power and try that again. So let's move the 10K back over to one of the sides here. And this other guy will go into... I'm just moving them way over so we have a lot of space since we need 
three resistors in series pretty much. All right, so we have our circuit as before. Now we're gonna add another 1K in here. All right, so there's a 1K. And then I have another 1K somewhere here. Here's one. All right, let's plug this in and see what happens. Here's our oscilloscope. And sure enough, it is lower than 87. Now we didn't drop it enough, but it's really great to see, uh, for me anyway, that by these small adjustments, they're, it's moving in the right direction and it is pretty stable. So at 12,000 ohms resistance, we had 87 hertz. At 10K resistance, we had 100 and something, I think, right? We removed, sorry, we added another 1,000. So now we're at 13,000 ohms and we're at 80 hertz. So all we have to do is just continue to add onto them. So I think what I'm gonna try next is just doubling up the 10K. So I'm gonna remove the 2K and the 1K and I'm going to add another 10K to either side. So we're gonna have 20,000 ohms of resistance. Now at this point, I'm completely abandoning the formula. Maybe I did something wrong, but it really got us close enough for us to make these adjustments, I think. So I think we're plugged in, I think. So we have two 10Ks in series, 20,000 ohms. And now we're way under. Now we're at, well, it shows like zero. I think I have a problem. Yeah, this one is on is in the wrong direction. All right, that should be charging side. Okay, so we're way, actually we're, we're kind of close. Now we're at 52 Hertz. We're at 20,000 ohms resistance. I guess at 15,000 ohms, maybe that would be like the shot. So let's let's try that. So I'm gonna plug up power, take out these 10Ks, and we need to now we need to reduce resistance. Yeah. All right. So let's get our bag of resistors again, wherever they are. Let's see, we have 2Ks, which we used before. I guess 4Ks might be good. All right. So let's plug in our 4Ks. I hope you can see, by the way, because my light is still off since the oscilloscope is hard to see. I guess I should turn it on. Okay. I do some of this stuff. So here's a 4K in series with a 10K. So we have 14,000 ohms and it's just going into the positive terminal of the uh, capacitor. Let's plug it in again and see what happens. All right, now we're at 72 Hertz. So we need to slow this down some more, right? So what does that mean? Add more resistance. So what if we add a, what if we add a 2K or a 1K? Man, you know, this is where the math <laughs> should be more exact, but I, I probably did something wrong. So let's just try and squeeze this guy in and add another resistor. And all right, so this is, what again, I'm gonna start getting confused. This is a 4K, I think. So we have 14,000 ohms. So if we add our 2K back in, will that be over? Let's see, let's plug power in again. Ooh, we're very close now, 63 Hertz. So what does that mean? We need to add resistance to slow it down, right? What if instead of the 2Ks, we just add another 4K? Let's try that. Instead of these 2Ks, we add more 4Ks. So here's two more 4Ks, take these out, and this guy. Okay, let's plug in power and see what happens. Boop. So now we're at 54 hertz. So we're just kind of dancing around that number. I'm gonna go back to the 63, and I think I'm gonna leave it there. Put our 2Ks back in. Okay, plug in power again. Should be at 62, 63 again. Yeah, 63 hertz. So I think this is pretty successful. The math got us really close, but I'm assuming that there's uh, let me turn on my light. I'm assuming that there's just some inconsistencies in, in my circuit. Maybe my design is not very good or the, the components maybe have more resistance or less resistance than anticipated. I don't really know how it works. But really cool though, we're able to get a 60 hertz signal from this oscillator. I think that's that's really, really cool. And we're able to tune this up and down. And by just replacing all the resistors, we can see how we can modify this number. So what I want to do is is kind of see because it should have 60 cycles per second, right? So oh, yeah, it looks like a you see, this is what was confusing me. It shows zero hertz. And the, if you count the cycles, it's super slow, very few on a one second timer. But as I zoom in, then you can really see it. So I don't really know how this works. This number is also changing. So I don't like how that looks either. It's, it's always going back to 63. So, okay, that makes sense. Cool. So we seem to have a true 63 hertz oscillation happening here. It looks like a solid light now on the camera. It looks like it's solid as well, just flashing super rapidly, 60 times per second. And maybe what we can do is try and use this in the future. So anyway, so it's good to know that with this formula, it will get us really close. We pretty much have this formula here. So the hertz that we want is equal to 0 0.693 times, for me, it's just R and, and C, right? R, C, and R, C, because I use the same since we want it to be 
to be even, right? We want the blinking to be completely even. We just uh, multiply, multiply, we add, we multiply, and then we just divide it into one, and that's our hertz. So I think a bit of a shorter project today, but this is one of those things that I've been intrigued by. I didn't want to just continue to kind of wing it with the frequencies and, you know, just kind of make things blink. I, I really want to be able to kind of go for a specific goal. So for me, being able to hit a certain hertz mark is, is really cool. And the more uh, of these formulas that we can kind of get comfortable with, we don't need to, you know, memorize these perfectly, but at least conceptually, when we see this in the future, we'll kind of know what it is. When we, whenever we need to hit a certain hertz, we'll be able to do that. So if you have one of these, uh, and of course we built this in a previous video that you can follow if, if you want to do it yourself. And all we, we're gonna do again is, uh, if we find the hertz that we want, we need to provide one of the other variables. We need to start with a resistance value or with a capacitor value. So if you wanted this to work with a specific capacitor, you just put that in here and then we'll get the resistance value as our output or as, as a uh, solution, you know, for the equation. So what we did first is we assumed 10K since we have a bunch of them. That gave us 1.2 microfarad. We only had a one microfarad. So we redid the, the equation. We put in our one microfarad, which is what this long number is. And then it gave us our resistance that we needed. So I hope this helps. Uh, not as exciting as just building something new, but really, really important, I think, to sort of just understand and, and dictate what's really happening in the circuit. So it can be ac actually useful for us in a, with a specific purpose. So uh, let's see what happens next. Thanks for watching.